Pete Joseph Lopez. He doesn't know this, but he's actually one of my heroes. Admiral Lopez is joined by his wife, Nancy. Thank you for coming, Nancy. And we actually have two four stars in the room. His father-in-law, Vice Admiral Steve Loftus, also a distinguished veteran who retired from the Navy as Deputy Chief of Naval Operations, is here. Thank you, Admiral Loftus. A brief biography of Admiral Lopez. Our speaker, Admiral Lopez, retired after 39 years of active service from the U.S. Navy in January of 1999. His last major assignments were simultaneously Commander-in-Chief of U.S. Naval Forces Europe, Commander-in-Chief Allied Forces Southern Europe, and Commander of U.S. and Allied Bosnia Peacekeeping Forces in Sarajevo, Bosnia. Prior to that, he served as Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Resources, Warfare Requirements and Assessments, and from 1992 to 1993, the commander of the U.S. Navy's Sixth Fleet, and from 1990 to 1992, the senior military attache to the Secretary of Defense. Interestingly and remarkably and wonderfully, Admiral Lopez is one of the just two flag officers in the history of the United States Navy who started as an enlisted man and ended up as a four-star. <laughs> Lopez, after retirement, directed three companies and served on numerous boards for public and private uh, instruction. He is an alumnus of Potomac State College, West Virginia Institute of Technology, and the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School. It is my distinct privilege to introduce Admiral Lopez. As a Steve was uh, Introducing me, and thank you for such a special introduction. I, I thought of a, a ball player who used to play for the Yankees. I'm a Red Sox fan, but I, I remember the Yankees. And Lou Gehrig said he was the luckiest man alive. And I felt that way all my life. Uh, distinguished guests and veterans, Veterans, we're here to celebrate you and remember you. Friends of the United States Armed Forces, it's a privilege to be here on Veterans Day at the Marshall House to represent U.S. military veterans. I'm honored at the opportunity to join you here today to pay tribute to veterans who have given a part of their life and also those who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we can enjoy freedom. From the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, in which you participated, sir. Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and so many other insurrections, our veterans make me proud to be an American and to be here at the home of perhaps our greatest ever soldier statesman, soldier statesman of modern history, General George C. Marshall. We are so grateful to the citizens of Leesburg for preserving this national treasure. And I'm reminded by Tom, as he said today, an international treasure, the Marshall home. And this home, was nearly demolished and only because of dedicated people here in Leesburg was it restored and it took over 15 years and 10 million dollars to save this beautiful home and the estate and fittingly it opened on Veterans Day in 2005. It still receives no government funding and is sustained only by the generous donations of Leesburg residents and fellow Americans. I hope that more of America can come here and support the home and the Marshall International Center. But for those of you here, thank you for your support. Being here today at the home of, of a great general and veteran 
reminds us all, particularly if you have ever been in uniform, that bearing arms in the service of your country is a very serious profession, one in which we can be asked the ultimate price, our life. In every war and action involving Americans, there were countless acts of heroism. In the battles, on the land, on the sea, and in the air, soldiers, sailors, marines, and airmen acted without hesitation to fight for each other and for freedom. We know that so many acts of heroism were never officially recognized, but I believe that today we can say all veterans who served in our wars are heroes. And sir, we recognize you today as a hero. For everyone who has served or fought for freedom in a distant land, there is a moment of silence when it's over. For some, it says the troop ship sailed or the plane finally left for home. For others, it came when they pulled off their uniform or in World War II and later their dog tags and they placed them in the bottom drawer. But also, always, with the end of duty comes some sadness, the memory of a friend who was severely wounded or someone who did not return home safely, a friend who never shared the joy of knowing how it was to felt or how it felt to come home when conflict finally gave way to peace and freedom stood preserved. Now it is my dream, and yours as well, that someday we will not have to pay this price, this price for freedom, and we will have no more veterans of war to honor because we will have no more wars. Every veteran shares that dream but peace and freedom have always depended on American leadership and American resolve. And most of all, upon the patriotism, dedication, professionalism, and courage of young Americans, men and women, prepared to give a part of their life to preserve freedom and peace. And when required, they put their lives on the line as they do today in the far reaches of this earth. Our goal is and always will be real peace, the triumph of freedom, not just the absence of war. No one embodied that philosophy and led our nation better toward lasting peace than General George C. Marshall. He truly believed that the projection of American influence for peace and not just the project, projection of power in war when that was necessary, he believed that the projection of influence was dominant. Like General Marshall, I have found that there is simply something extraordinary about the United States of America. I visited over 60 countries in my Navy career and more since. But the more I learned about the world and the many wonderful countries in it, the more extraordinary I find my own country. We are not envied so much for our wealth, but for our freedom. Our unique freedom and individual rights are what sets America apart one right that is not exactly spelled out in our Constitution or Bill of Rights is the right to succeed. We need to support our veterans when they complete their service and they embark on success as civilians in every field of endeavor in our great country. They have the right to succeed. There is no greater example of post-military leadership and service the man than the man who lived in this house, General Marshall. He knew that when our nation invested in veterans and their families, 
that the resulting benefit to communities, businesses, organizations, and public service was overwhelmingly positive. When I retired from military service, I had the privilege to direct two different companies. And I took the opportunity to interview and hire veterans. As I found them loyal, a tremendous work ethic, and they were dedicated to job and mission, and their results of their efforts were unparalleled. Put simply, I have found veterans in all walks of life to be among our greatest assets. George C. Marshall recognized that first, and after World War II, helped build a citizen army that not only strengthened our country, but kept it that way for 50 years. He gave us a powerful example to follow. Our veterans understand how special it is to be an American because we are a constitutional democracy with a free economic system. We're in a society founded on values, rooted in our religious faith, which enshrines the dignity and worth of the individual human being. The government of our society exists only by the consent of the governed, you and me. We are a model for others. Ours is not a system to be imposed on others. It is a system to help and inspire others. If you only remember one thing today, remember this. As Americans, our greatest asset is our tradition of liberty. It is the idea of freedom that sets America apart. Freedom is the foundation of our democratic form of government. Freedom has allowed us to prosper. We are a prosperous nation, but it is our liberty, not our prosperity, that counts. From outside our borders, freedom will always be opposed by those who believe that our faith and the dignity of the individual threatens their oppressive rule. These threats from forces intent on imposing their way of life or simply seeking gain through terrorism or aggression must be deterred. Military preparedness and if necessary the willingness to fight and win will be required if the United States and its friends are to protect our freedom and that of others. We, in this generation, will continue to hold high and proud the banners of liberty that our veterans carried. We thank them and respect them for their service today. But we owe veterans a debt of gratitude every day for what they have done for America, both in peacetime and war. There's a memorial in the Pacific that pays tribute to those veterans who fought in the battles of World War II. It's very short, but very profound. And it says, when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave you our today. And finally, in this generation, we need to be successful in our efforts to preserve the freedom for which our veterans of war fought. They gave us precious liberty, and we can never forget. God bless our veterans for the splendid heritage they've given us, and may God continue to bless our nation, the United States of America, and thank you for allowing me to share today with you. Thank you.